Today I have four Christmas DIYs that are our cozy rustic farmhouse. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own. Okay, we're going to start off with this little glass container. I think it's a candle holder that came from Dollar Tree. Just a little candle that will fit inside of it. And this is a little battery operated. This is safest. We're going to use some rubbing alcohol and a paper towel for cleaning. Some paper shreds, wherever you get yours from. And then we're going to use some of this Hippo Water Slide Decal Paper. After you've selected your image, you are going to use a sealer, just like this. And you're going to use three coats, dry in 10 minutes in between. And we're going to clean off our glass here so that we have a good, clean surface. No fingerprints, no oils, no dirt. A little paper towel, a little alcohol will clean this right up. I'm going to do the inside, the outside, take the tag off the bottom. And so this is the one that I have chosen, this little print. And if you go to my Pinterest, which is in my link tree, I do believe, you can choose from a huge variety of free printables. They are not my printables. I didn't make them, but they are just on a board there for you to try. You're going to put this in water after you've cut it down. It takes about 30 to 60 seconds for this to work. And you'll know because the paper will kind of get a little more um, dull looking and then you'll be able to easily test it by sliding with your fingers and you can see that I'm actually moving that back and forth on that paper. So before you use it, you need to wet the surface that you're using and since I had some water here, I'm just gonna rub a little bit on with my fingers. This is gonna help that image slip around on there so you can get it exactly where you want it. It's wonderful. It's not an adhesive back, so so much easier to use these. You're just going to hold it in place and then slowly slide the paper backing off. Just like that. Don't worry about the wrinkles because you can easily press those out with your fingers. Just be careful and just pat it down and get those wrinkles and little bubbles out. Kind of get it positioned where you want it. And then you're going to pat it with a paper towel. And this is going to get all the extra water off of it. Very easy. You still have plenty of time to move it around and get it where it needs to be. And this is how it looks. And it does have that kind of a hazy, frosted appearance underneath it. So in order for everything to blend together, I'm going to use some of my matte Mod Podge and go on the inside of my container because my decal is still wet. It's still in the process of drying. And I'm going to go on the inside and just cover the entire inside. I'm going to use a fluffy brush and use long strokes. Now, I'm going to have some little strokes in here to make sure I get it where it needs to be. But when I am getting toward the end, it's going to be long, even strokes so that everything is blended and you get a nice coverage. Just like this. Go all the way around, get the lip. And then when it dries, it's going to give you a nice, pretty frosted look. I'm just going over the edge because a little bit of that decal was over the top. I could have trimmed it off, but I just decided to Mod Podge over it. Once it is dried, I'm going to take my paper shreds and stuff them into the bottom. This is going to lift up my candle because the candle is a little short and it's going to give it I don't know, kind of a rustic snowy look under there. So I'm pressing that down so it's even with the top. You'll be able to see in the end screen how it turns out uh, with a light in, on on the inside. Okay, so the next project is going to be this little board, this little standing sign that you can get these uh, at the Dollar Tree. I'm going to use some chalk paint and I'm going to paint the first side white with the chalk paint. I'm just putting it on fairly thick and I'm only using one coat. I don't want a solid coverage here because I like rustic and a little bit showing through just gives it kind of an aged look and that's perfect for me. It's perfect for what I'm going for. Once it is dry you're going to print out your next um, picture and you're going to seal it and then you're going to trim it out. So it's a paper backing and it's just a, um, a clear front. It's sort of a frosted looking front not completely glass clear and it's okay to have some of the white showing on these because you're not going to see this you know it's just going to be like an outline but it kind of merges in to the colors that you have around it so whatever paint you choose you're going to be able to see that paint underneath it 
and it helps that it's a chalk paint because it has a matte finish and it makes it a little more kind of disguises your your image a little bit so the same process here I'm going to slip this down in the water let it soak 30 to 60 seconds and I'm just pressing it down I could have put more water in there and they will uncurl on their own um, I've done another video with these um, papers and I'll link that for you you can see here how I'm sliding that paper off you know that it's ready but you gotta wet that surface so I'm just gonna use my mister for this and just spray a little bit and just dab it off I don't know how chalk paint normally does with adding water to it but we're gonna go with it and I don't have any problem at all I've used acrylic and chalk paint underneath and I've had no problem with it no bleeding no smudging off no problem okay since since it's in place now we're just gonna pat it down same process as we did with the glass doing a flat surface is a little bit easier um, just in my opinion but you can do it however you want because there's so much versatility with these um, these decals absolutely love it and the customer service is fantastic so you're just gonna clean that up just like so and then I have a little overhang here which is not a problem I'm just gonna take my scissors and trim that off and I did bump the edge but that's all right that is all right I'm not mad about it because I'm gonna go around and sand a little bit so it'll be fine be sure you stay tuned to the end of the video because I've got a special surprise for my 7,000 subscriber celebration okay so we're gonna make this a little bit extra of course and we're gonna take some ribbon one of mine is from the big lots uh, last year from the big lots from Big Lots last year on clearance and then the other one is going to be one from Dollar Tree that you can get all year round I'm gonna cut these at five inches and I'm just going to cut three different times so that we have I don't know what is that nine we're gonna have nine pieces of ribbon pretty pretty and we're gonna make like a little stacked bow here hey if you want to show me some love you can buy me a coffee see the link in the description box below by the way you guys are spoiling me with coffee oh my gosh and I'm loving it too I love me some pumpkin spice cold brew really any cold brew but it's, since it's getting cold outside I'm gonna be drinking my hot drinks and Christmas is coming so that means peppermint mocha oh yeah okay so you're just gonna crisscross this over just like this and then I'm, you can use a piece of jute to tie the middle and that's what I was going to do but I just decided to go ahead and use another piece of that thinner snowflake ribbon to go on top and tie it off now I'm just gonna loosely tie it here and then adjust where it needs to be adjusted and then pull it tight and once you get it pulled tight you want to put two knots in there so that you don't have any ribbons flying off on you when you're trying to fluff and then you could just move it around these are not wired ribbons obviously so no worries there I'm just looking for placement trying to decide where I want it and I think right on the top would be great this is kind of an unfinished top so I think this is a good place for it it's going to be convenient too when we work on the back side of the sign so there you go now I'm going to add just two little pieces of this same pick that I've been using for several projects and we're gonna just put little pieces in here if you buy bigger picks at Dollar Tree or at the thrift store wherever you get them from just remember you can cut things off you can pull them off if they're wired just use some wire cutters and just trim them down that way otherwise lots of picks you can just pull them straight off the branch and they're great for these smaller projects that is so cute look at that I love that I'm gonna put that near my coffee pot I do believe okay so now we're gonna do the next side and I have another one of these it's a little bit larger it's the same as the one that is on our glass candle holder it is so pretty um, I wanted to use it again so now I've got some coordinating pieces but the colors are gonna look good regardless I'm gonna take some of this oatmeal chalk paint you can use whatever color you like it has a little bit of a greenish greenish cast but it's a I don't know how to explain the color you know what oatmeal looks like right with a little bit of green in it okay so we're going to just cover this up just like we did on the other side and I'm just trying to be careful not to get paint everywhere because I don't want it on my bow you could have done this before the embellishments on the top but it was an afterthought so here we go again 
We're going to get that decal ready. Subscribe to this channel if you're enjoying this content. I would love to have you as part of the family. Okay, and you can see here that it's slipping now off of there, so it is indeed ready. I'm going to put it back down in the water and just miss this. This is already dried, by the way, and I'm just going to pat it off a tad, and I'm going to add the decal. I'm just going to hold it with my thumb and gently pull down on the paper, and it's going to lay down. So beautiful. I love the colors of this decal against that oatmeal chalk paint that is just stunningly rustic i just love this and there are little cotton pods on that wreath decal so i think we're going to add a little something on the top to kind of bring that out i have a cotton pod you can get these at dollar tree my husband actually bought me a pack of these on amazon and I've just cut off the wire and I'm just gonna hot glue it down right in the center of the back side of that bow and we're gonna add some more of this greenery. I've cut down these pieces from, they were that longer piece and then I've just kind of cut them in half and in quarters to give them a little bit of a layered look. You know what we always say, what we crafters say, depth and dimension, we're gonna give it some depth and dimension and it really does make a difference in your projects. It, it gives them a more high-end look and it gives you a little something, rather than being flat, it gives some interest to your eye. There you go. Our little two-sided sign. And be sure you let that dry. And the package will tell you how long approximately it will take. You can put that anywhere. Follow me on my social media on Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. Now we're gonna move on to our next project. On this one, we'll be using the transfer paper for dark fabric. That's the package that we're using. And I've printed out, have yourself a merry little Christmas. And this is what that paper looks like. There's a grid on the back. You're gonna print on the front. I'm gonna use some greenery here, and that's just a scrap of fabric that I've used in other projects. So everything's gonna be nicely coordinated. And then this is an embroidery uh, hoop that I have. And this is my Vivo Home heat press. This is a new item that um, I've recently got and I'm trying out. And I'll be doing a separate video on that for you. So I'm going to trace this out so that I can fit it on the inside of that embroidery hoop and on top of my fabric. And I'm just going to trim it down so that it looks good um, where I need it. Now. You're gonna have a white background with this. Just know that there will be a white background on this one. Peel that backing off. Easy, it came off very easily. It's not sticky on the back, so you have a little time to work with it and move it. I'm trying to find pretty much my center here. And I'm counting my stripes. That makes it very convenient and easy. Just gonna press it down. I'm going to cover it with my grease-free paper that also comes in your package. Then use my heat press to press it down for the right amount of time. And then it is nicely sealed onto my paper. I do have a little mess here. Maybe I held it down for too long. I'm new to the heat press. We'll have to see. But I'm okay with it. Like I said, rustic, I'm not worried about it. Okay, so now I'm just trying to find my placement on here so that it is centered. And I'm going to show you when you don't have it centered, because you're going to watch me press it down. You can see here clearly that is not centered. But because we don't have the screws tightened down all the way, you can pull your fabric while it is in that hoop. And then when you get it where you want it to be, then you can just tighten down the screw and it will be there for a long time. Okay, so it looks pretty much centered to me. Good enough. Could tighten that screw, and then we're going to flip it over and cut. You can see me cutting very close to the frame here and holding that fabric up. Now, you can see the scissors are sideways. This makes it easier to get a, a cleaner cut. You don't have all that extra hanging off of there, and you can't see it once you've got your item placed where you want it. I'm just going to go all the way around and be careful that you don't cut into your hoop and get a bunch of splinters, because I have done that before with some very sharp scissors. Trimmy, trim, trim, all the way around. Okay, 
Now, um, you don't have to glue your frame together if you want to use this for something else, then, you know, don't glue it together, but you could certainly glue it if you want it to be permanent. Now, here we go with those picks again. We're going to try to decide how you want to place your greenery. I've got to have greenery on everything, it looks like, doesn't it? So you can put it on the bottom of your hoop, you can put it on the top. You can use a round hoop instead if you cannot find an oval. I, the oval ones are harder for me to find at the thrift stores, but you know, whatever you have, whatever you like, we're just gonna work with it. Since I have the screw on the side, I want to do something to kind of hide that. And I think this is a good place to put a swag. It gives it a different look and I like it. We're gonna take some floral wire and I'm gonna cut that off at a pretty good length here so that I can use it to layer these pieces together. You can certainly use zip ties. They're a little more bulky though, but um, totally up to you, whatever you have. And you could also, you know, if you wanted to tie this together with some jute, you could. If you had something that you could just hot glue together, you could. But I find that using wire really holds things together nicely. Okay, so here we just stacked them up. Now I'm gonna add this pick that's got some berries on it. And it's actually a fall pick, I believe. But I think it looks great with this. What do you think? You think those look okay? I think they look pretty good. Now I'm gonna go around the middle once I get them exactly where they want to, where they need to be, where they want to be. Yes, they want to live there. Okay, now I'm gonna twist them. I'm gonna twist them tight, turn them around, and then this is where we'll place them. Now I'm gonna take my zip tie and put it through the ring back there where the screw is and across the center of this greenery. Now I left a little gap in the greenery here because we're gonna make a bow. And I think you'll like this bow. Clip it off. Okay. Now you can do a little fluffing here to put this where you want. Also makes it convenient when you use wire because you can pull these things back and forth. And a good quality greenery, even if it's thrifted, especially if it's thrifted, will do that for you. Okay, so here's some more Dollar Tree ribbon. And I'm going to use about eight inches here. I'm just measuring, I have a, a little tape down there, a little measuring tape on my table. And I'm going to make some loops. This is easy, you're just gonna fold it over on itself several times, just fold and fold and fold until we get four loops, four layers on each side. So there's four and there's four. And then I'm gonna turn it around this way and count one two three four and one two three so now there's the fourth one we're going to cut that off you don't need to leave a tail in it i'm going to fold it in half to find my center and grab my wire cutters and just cut the wire on the edges now you can use scissors for this if you'd like i'm just using these because it can be done i'm going to use a piece of jute put it right into those notches we're going to slip it into the notches and then just tie this Gonna tie it tightly, put a few knots in it so that it stays in place. Now, for the fun part, we get to fluff the bow. And then we're gonna fluff these pieces out. We're gonna pull them away from each other, out, and give them just a little twist. Olivia from Olivia's Romantic Home calls this the Olivia bow, but I have seen this bow done by several different crafters, so is there really a name? Probably not. Maybe we should call it the notch bow. Sounds pretty good. You cut notches, right? Let's call it the notch bow. Okay, so we're gonna use that piece of jute that is still on there because we didn't cut it off. And we're just gonna tie it around where we've already got everything zip tied down. You can zip tie it if you want. Now I've added some tails, but my camera cut out. I've just folded a long piece in half and then put a little hot glue under the bow. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of hot glue to just put the bow to hold it a little more stably in place. And then to keep that tail off of the S part of Christmas, I'm just going to put a dot of glue right there. Be careful not to burn yourself. Now use whatever you want to use to hang this up. Keep in mind that it's going to be heavier on the side with the greenery than on the other side. So if you don't want it to hang crooked, you need to be sure that you put a hanger on that can be adjusted or that you know you can pull around from side to side. So here that one is. Pretty, I love it. I think it turned out so nice. Oh my goodness, here we go. I'm gonna let you take a look at all of the 
beautiful pieces that we made today while I tell you about something special. I'm so glad that you stuck around to the end because we are having a 7,000 subscriber giveaway. Yay! And Hippo so graciously sent me extras and I am going to be given a package of the transfer paper and a package of the water slide decal paper to a very fortunate winner. So here are the rules. You gotta be a subscriber. You have to tell me your favorite Christmas song and why you like it. The rest of the information will be in the description box below. So which one of these projects is your favorite? I would love to know that as well. Thank you so much for stopping by. I appreciate each and every one of you from the bottom of my heart. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.